We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides. Welcome back to Liberty Nation Radio, heard coast to coast on the Radio American Network. I'm your host, Mark Angelides. We're very fortunate to have with us Liberty Nation's senior political analyst and longtime host of this year's radio show, Mr. Tim Donner. Welcome aboard, Tim. Always good to be here, Mark. Thanks. So it's a shame that nothing happened in the, the news this last week, so we don't have slow too much. News week. Slow news week. <laughs> One of the slowest I can remember in recent history. No, in all seriousness, this was... Uh, if you could apply a waiting system to weeks, waiting as a, a different weight, um, then I think this would really be swinging the pendulum in its favor here. I think this was a, a very significant week in history. What's your take? Well, you know, Mark, I want to take us back 18 months to November of 2022. Republicans had just lost a third uh, national election in a row, essentially, uh, because the red wave never happened. Biden, Joe Biden, had reached his highest approval levels. Donald Trump had been trumped by Ron DeSantis, who had won a 20-point victory in his reelection bid for governor of Florida and was going to enter the presidential race. And Donald Trump announced his uh, third attempt at the Republican nomination in Mar-a-Lago in November of 2022. And it was a depressing affair. Very few people showed up, including a limited number of his own family. The sentence was he was running again because that's what he does but that his heart might not have been in it and that it was almost perfunctory that he was running again. Now you fast forward 18 months and you get this. For those of you just listening on the radio, that's uh, the New York Post front cover. Post front cover, everything's coming up Trump. Mark, this was entirely inconceivable 18 months ago. And if you go back to January 7th of 2021, after the Capitol riot of of January 6th, I don't think anybody, including Trump himself, could have believed that he would be in the triumphant position he is in now. He was already leading this race and putting distance between himself and Joe Biden. And now, with the assassination attempt, He's turned from really a hero to a legend, from a, from a man to a force of nature, someone who cheated death and undoubtedly will be changed because of it. It's fascinating that you use the term hero there, Tim, because I know to a lot of voters he is, uh, obviously to an equal number, he's the, the exact opposite uh, of a hero. But there's something about the hero's journey story where one has to be brought low before one can be raised high. Um, yes. And it, it's an archetypal story, of course. Uh, we're all familiar with it through every form of media, pretty much. But it, it really seems that Donald Trump has defied the odds. And it's not just due to the assassination attempt. I mean, the pendulum was swinging uh, pole-wise towards a Donald Trump victory well prior to that attempt. And I do wonder, of course, there was an added booster from the the uh, June 27th debate again, as I, I like to call it. I'm yes. trying to get that word going. Well, Nobody seems the, to be picking I think it the up. Genesis, yeah, I think the genesis of this was it all began with a thing that just got tossed out, which was the raid at Mar-a-Lago, mm. which then became... Uh, federal charges uh, for possessing classified information illegally. And how ironic, Mark, that that just got tossed out on the first day, the Republican National Convention. I mean, the, the way that things have fallen, it's almost like everything mm. that went wrong for Donald Trump in 2020 is now going right for him. And everything that went right for Joe Biden 
is going wrong. And I've never seen anything like this. We entered this year, Mark, admitting that this was going to be a wild ride. But I don't think anybody could have envisioned everything that we've seen from a debate performance for the ages and not because of <laughs> its positive, but because of its negative. And an assassination attempt against a leading candidate in the middle of a presidential campaign. I don't think anybody could have envisioned this. Even those of us, and it's pretty much everybody who knew this was going to be a crazy wild ride through the 2024 election. Yeah, uh, you wrote a fascinating piece uh, on the day after. Uh, it's on the pages of LibertyNation.com. You can go and check it out. Uh, it published on the day after the attempted assassination of Donald Trump in, in Butler, Pennsylvania. And it was it was a message in that article that hinted at something that you wrote again later on, uh, that it, it was almost like an inflection point for America, because a lot of a lot of people weren't, you know, a lot of people who were witnessing this, they weren't alive the last time there was uh, an attempted assassination on either a president or a presidential mm -hmm. candidate. How do you think the how do you think the world has woken up differently? Well, you know, Mark, having lived through both the JFK assassination in 1963 and, of course, 9-11 in 2001, this isn't quite the same thing because the attempt to assassinate Donald Trump failed. But the fact that it was done, the fact that it came within a millimeter of blowing his brains out um, has to change the political climate. And it certainly has changed the country, except on the extremes on both sides, uh, both of whom are blaming each other for this incident. But there was a depression, really, almost like a wet blanket that overcame the country after the JFK assassination and after 9-11, a sense of incredulity, like, how could this happen to us? How could this happen in our land? We had a bit of a sense of that in 1981, when John Hinckley almost succeeded in killing, assassinating Ronald Reagan, and he came closer than most people realized. Reagan was also within an inch of his life, a fact that we didn't find out till years later. But it has an undeniably sobering effect on the nation. And I think you could see that in Donald Trump's face when he emerged on the first day of the Republican convention. You saw an emotion mm. in his face. You saw gratitude in his face. You saw a change in his face that said, I'm supposed to be dead. I'm lucky to be alive. And I'm so grateful for it. And I think if you get shot in the head, Mark, your perspective on life is bound to change. And so is the country's. You know, there's uh, something quite strange about how the, the reaction of Donald Trump essentially shaped what was happening going forward from that moment. It's almost like time was moving forward and then it had an option to split on which way to go in the same way that the assassin's bullet missed was Donald Trump's reaction. Uh, if he'd have been hurried off the stage, head bowed, I, I think the country would be feeling very different today than how it did where he stands up towering over many of the, the, the secret service people raising his fist in the air. And it showed a, a defiance that I, th I don't think many people would have credited Donald Trump with, but it, I think it also set the tenor for how the, the heart of the nation really reacted to it. So rather than just the, as you say, that wet blanket that uh, clouded uh, the, the minds after uh, Kennedy's assassination, that there was almost a, an exhilaration that he yes. beat that, we can beat this. And that, it's, that's it's, for everybody, not, not just Republicans. You know, we it's can what, uh, get past it. It's why, why I titled my article Dodging a Bullet, mm. because that's what Trump did. 
That's what the country did because the level of chaos and bedlam and violence that would have happened if that Donald Trump had not turned his head one millisecond before that shot hit. Because you can see the projection would have hit him right right in the head. Mm. Would have shattered his head. Someone's like what happened with a John F. Kennedy. But you know what? The image, I mean, this is it. This, the image of him standing there with his fist raised, his face bloodied, the American flag in the backdrop. Uh, Mark, that's an image people will be looking at 100 years from now and shaking their heads. You could, you could never pay to create an image like that. You could never pay for the strength that accrues to you for having done that. You get shot in the head, and then you get up, you raise your fist, and you tell your followers to keep fighting. I mean, I don't know how you... The left is trying its best to say he stoked uh, this uh, attempt through his own language. It's pretty much falling on deaf ears. They don't know what to do because, look, they just took the one issue that Joe Biden had left to run on was the danger of Donald Trump. That's the one thing he had left. He couldn't run on his record, his competence, his age, um, his ability to do the job even, but he could run on paralyzing people in fear about what happened, to Don, uh, about what would happen if Donald Trump became president. He has now lost that one remaining issue. And this election, if it wasn't over already, clearly is now. And as I said in my article, we might as well start planning. I mean, with the, the transition to a second Trump presidency might as well start now because you cannot beat what Donald Trump got out of that failed assassination attempt. It's something that will live for the ages. We'll be back talking the other factors involved in this campaign after this short break with Liberty Nation senior political analyst Tim Donner. Don't go anywhere. We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides.